Hey guys, do you already have your way to manage dependencies in Unity? Alchemybow.core supports your architecture with dependency injection, which is very similar to the pattern you often use in the engine. Are you familiar with getComponent or findObjectOfType method families? They're an example of the service locator pattern. The basic idea is that there is a container of objects, for example a scene, and at any time we can try to locate some service that is inside it for example, a camera. The problem here is that the service may not exist, be forgotten or accidentally deleted. In a good case, we'll notice it right away. But if the buggy code isn't executed early in the game, it can easily get into the product. Another problem is that in Unity it's very easy to mix up dependency initialization code with game code. For example, in the awake method you can locate a tool and use it right away. But if the tool also requires awake, it may fail due to the execution order. The main purpose of dependency injection is to prevent such scenarios. But before we focus on how it works, let's quickly review two short definitions. A service is an object that can do some work on demand, and a client is an object that uses services to work. It's also quite common for objects to be services and clients at the same time. Now, let's check how it works in alchemybow.core. From the previous video, you already know that we can use mono installers to bind objects to the so-called container. But what does it mean? The first rule is that if we bind an object, it becomes a potential client. So the framework will scan its class for the injection target attribute. And if it's there, it will try to inject values to the fields decorated with the inject attribute. Actually, each level of the inheritance hierarchy is scanned, so sometimes we can add injection target multiple times. The client behavior can be achieved with the bind inaccessible method, but the most common way to bind is to use the bind method, which additionally associates the object with a specific type, so it can later be injected into other clients. In other words, it also makes the object a service. We've already solved the problems presented at the beginning of the video. There is a place exclusive to resolving dependencies. And if any service required by clients doesn't exist, we will get an error as soon as we hit the play button. So now let's get to know some additional features. First, let's take a look at dynamic collection bindings. The base construction goes like this. Container .add to dynamic collection binding collection type, item type and the item. It allows you to build injectable collections using independent installers. But it takes quite a lot of space, so it's a good idea to create shortcuts, for example in the form of extension methods. Actually, we already used this feature in the previous video. Do you remember iLoading callbacks handlers? We added them to a dynamic list using a built-in shortcut method. Any collection that implements generic iCollection and iEnumerable can be used. So collections like dictionaries or hash sets are allowed too, but there is one thing to remember. The items are not bound, they are added to the collection that is bound. So, if we need them to be clients or services, we need to bind them explicitly. So now, only one thing is missing. What if we want to inject dependencies into a dynamically created object? We can't do it at the start, because it doesn't exist yet. But nothing prevents us from storing all the necessary dependencies in another object, and later using it for dynamic instance creation. It can be done manually, but it's quite redundant work. So alchemybow.core provides a tool called Dynamic Injector to automate it. Instead of binding an object, you need to bind an injector, with the type of the object as a generic parameter. Then you can use it to inject. Now let's summarize all the new knowledge with an example. We would like to modify the project from the previous episode in such a way that a new enemy spawns every few seconds instead of one permanent enemy at the start. So first, let's slightly modify the project. Delete the enemy installer from the scene and from the project. Then make sure the enemy script is enabled. Create a prefab and delete the instance from the scene. Now let's update the enemy script. Delete the implementation of iCore loading callbacks handler since we won't use it anymore. Then add a nested class called factory with a method that takes a position as a parameter and uses a prefab and dynamic injector to create an enemy instance. Now let's create a class for spawning logic. It can look like this. The iCore loading callbacks handler is used to enable spawning and invoke repeating to spawn every few seconds. Finally, the spawner installer. Since it uses iCore loading callbacks handler, let's add it to the dynamic list. It's not a service, but it requires some dependencies, so let's make it only a client using the bind inaccessible method. Then, let's create a dynamic injector and a factory. We use the constructor to pass the injector to the factory, 
so we can bind it in accessible, but the spawner relies on injection to get the factory. So let's use the bind method to make it also a service. Now go back to Unity and create a game object for the enemy spawner. Add the components and drag the enemy spawner and prefab to the installer. Finally, drag the installer to the core controller and hit the play button. Voila! It works again. You probably noticed that there is nothing stopping us from using the standard Unity ways. And actually, it's how alchemybow.core works. It's a power tool that you can use to improve your workflow, and it's not intended to prevent you from using features you already know and like. In the next videos, I am going to talk about scopes, loading and states. So stay tuned and see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe and if you can't wait, check the framework documentation page. All the links in the bio.